basically before uh, you know going into the practical things we will talk a bit about uh, vaccination programs in india and as we all know we have read in our uh, psm spm community medicine test books of bbs a lot about vaccination and we all know government runs uh, national programs on vaccinations and earlier we eliminated polio through uh, polio is was eradicated eliminated because of a huge pulse polio program which was run for more than a decade in our country so first of all we will briefly look at how uh, the governments looks at it and what are the government facilities how it has evolved over a period of uh, you know several decades i would say in india so initially it was uh, known as expanded uh, program on immunization in 1978 and it was uh, renamed as universal immunization program so uip in, in 1985 when it was expanded beyond the urban areas across urban rural all areas in 1992 it became part of the child survival and safe motherhood program so you see it was initially 1978 it was the same time when the almata declaration was uh, you know the, the conference of almata uh, health for all uh, declaration was done in almati which is uh, in kazakhstan formerly ussr and uh, in the same year this expanded program on immunization was launched and it was renamed as uh, it was expanded and then it was renamed as universal immunization program when it was expanded beyond the urban areas and in 1992 it became part of the child survival and safe motherhood program uh in 1997 it was included in the ambit of national reproductive and child health program because uh, mother and child are taken uh, as a unit a maternal child health so uh, you see in 1997 evolved further and as we know national rural health mission was launched in 2005 and an universal immunization program then was integrated with this uh, program which was about strengthening health uh, care infrastructure uh, among the 18 most Uh, you know uh, uh, states where the health parameters were lowest or you know, poorly performing states and universal immunization program is one of the largest public health programs uh, not only in india but across world and it targets close to 2.67 crore newborns and around 3 crore pregnant women annually so it is a humongous work of government Uh, public health system and it is considered one of the most cost effective public health interventions uh, and is con- and, and, and said to be largely responsible for reduction of vaccine preventable under 5 mortality rate so uh, uh, government gives a lots of emphasis and same you know over period of decades uh, uh, parents community have become aware about the vaccines and so uh, we'll know a little more about this uh, program so under universal immunization program immunization is provided free of cost against 12 vaccine preventable diseases so remembering this number is important 12 vaccine preventable diseases what are these nationally uh, these are nine diphtheria pertussis tetanus polio measles rubella childhood tuberculosis hepatitis b meningitis and pneumonia caused by hemophilus influenza type b so these are the nine uh, diseases which are included in the universal immunization program by the government of india and it is uh, implemented across the state governments then there are you know sub nationally because you know many diseases are endemic uh, as you know for example japanese encephalitis is uh, endemic in parts of up and bihar and Um, a few other uh, parts of india so uh, uh, for that purpose sub nationally three more diseases like rotavirus diarrhea pneumococcal pneumonia and japanese encephalitis among these three rotavirus and pneumococcal conjugate vaccine are in process of action expansion by japanese encephalitis 
vaccine is provided only in the endemic districts, uh, the one I mentioned of UP and Bihar. And for definition sake, for sake of understanding and terminology, what does it mean to have a fully immunized child? So a child is said to be fully immunized if child receives all due vaccines as per national immunization schedule within one year of uh, age of the child. So why I'm talking about this? Because this is the minimum that we have to advise to the patients. Then there are optional vaccines, additional vaccines, uh, special vaccines for the immunocompromised, which are you know not part of the national immunization program. But when parents come to us, at least we should be you know uh, aware and be able to provide vaccines which are part of the national immunization program. And uh, then only you know we can do extra if at all because the slight difference between what Indian Academy of Pediatrics, the Pediatricians Association. Uh, recommends and what has been accepted as part of the national uh, universal immunization program. So a child is said to be fully immunized if he or she has received all due vaccines as per the national immunization schedule within first years of child. So uh, as family physicians, when we provide vaccination service, it is our responsibility that we advise, we give right advice so that no child that comes in our contact or no family that comes in our contact is is left unimmunized or not fully immunized so uh, the two milestones uh, of the national immunization program as i said earlier one was elimination of polio in 2014 and uh, an elimination of maternal and neonatal tetanus in 2015 so these are considered uh, the biggest public health achievements of India since independence. A uh, few more recent uh, changes have happened and uh, are in process of evolvement from the government's program perspective. Among this, inactivated polio vaccine. So normally, uh, you know, in India, we have been uh, knowing and talking about uh, oral polio vaccine, OPV. But now, uh, even government of India has committed uh, since 2016 that we will give uh, injectable polio vaccine uh, in developed countries like United States and other European countries already they were giving injectable polio vaccine they were not using oral polio vaccine oral polio vaccine was given for pulse polio program because it was easy to administer it is cost effective and it is easy to carry and administer but now in 2015 it was started in uh, six states and gradually it is being expanded to other parts of the country and it is being made part of the uh, uh, national immunization program again a rotavirus vaccine which is a oral vaccine uh, has been introduced to reduce mortality and morbidity caused by rotavirus diarrhea uh, it was introduced in mind i'm talking about the government program in March 2016, and initially it was introduced in 11 districts Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Himachal, Jharkhand, Odisha, Assam, Tripura, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh. And it is it was you know planned to expand across country in 2019 and 20. But since we all know in 2020 what happened was COVID, and you know, uh, it is said that because of COVID, uh, this whole universal immunization program has been impacted and many of the you know even from the funding perspective or also from the logistics perspective a health system is overburdened with covid morbidity disease and related activities so uh, i'm not sure uh, uh, but this is the was the plan of government to introduce new uh, rotavirus vaccine across india by 2019-2020 then in 2017, uh, you know, uh, the combination of measles and rubella vaccine. So this has been introduced in a campaign based model in, and uh, it is uh, MR. So normally what we know is MMR, mumps, mumps, measles and rubella. So this vaccine is measles and rubella. And it was a campaign targeting around 
41 crore children in the age group from 9 months to 15 years, covering about one third of the total population of the country, followed by two doses of the routine immunization uh, between six, uh, sorry, 9 to 12 months and 16 to 14 months. Uh, so, the rubella component is now under the routine immunization as MR vaccine. So, this was an additional initiative in form of MR. This was apart from the MMR vaccine, which is given during childhood. And this vacancy was to be given for all children across nine months to 15 years of age. Now, uh, this initiative on pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, and it was launched in May 17, again, along with MR vaccine for reducing infant mortality and morbidity caused by pneumococcal pneumonia. It has been reduced in Bihar, Himachal, Madhya Pradesh, and 19 districts of Uttar Pradesh, 18 districts of Rajasthan. And the plan is to expand it gradually. And, and then uh, tetanus and adult diphtheria vaccine, TT has been replaced with TD vaccine in UIP. And the limit of waning immunity against diphtheria in the older age groups. So uh, because, uh, you know, uh, there were cases of uh, diphtheria among older you know, age groups because the uh, DPT vaccine, which immunized against uh, diphtheria, the immunity was waning. So uh, this is being introduced as TD vaccine to be administered to adolescent at age of 10 years and 16 years of age and to pregnant women. So in, instead of tetanus, what is being prescribed for adolescent and 10 years of children and uh, pregnant women is TD, which is tetanus and adult diphtheria vaccine. So these are the new things which is uh, which is considered conventional. So uh, normally, if you look at the government vaccination card, or not all these things may not be you know mentioned, but it is important to be aware so that if somebody asks you, uh, especially from the parents' perspective, it is important that we you know convincingly, uh, not only we know, but we are also able to express and communicate with the parents with confidence then only they will take this service from us otherwise you know general perception is that you know pediatric pediatrician should do the pediatric vaccination uh, before this you know the boom of specialization come earlier uh, all over india family physicians general practitioners used to give vaccination but after the you know advent of you know newer specialties and the culture of specialization uh, this part was you know more or less snatched away from the family physicians but uh, there is no legal problem uh, in doing vaccination by family physician, but because it can also be done by, you know, ASHA workers, by, you know, nurse practitioners, by uh, nursing professionals. So family physicians are well authorized to provide all this vaccination. They can, you know, arrange it, provide it at their own, to their own private patients. So, uh, but we have to know what are the, you know, current practices. And what are the current uh, recommendations? Uh, so as you see, through 2014, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, all these new developments have taken place, which we probably did not read on our test books uh, when we were students. But this is you know continuous process, and we have to be aware about what government is saying, because when we practice, our competency, our knowledge should not be less than what is being, uh, you know. Uh, uh, parallelly given both in government sector as well as in private sector. So these are the few of the newer initiatives related to vaccine logistic function management and uh, uh, capacity building uh, as part of capacity building national cold chain training center has been established in Pune and vaccine management resource center uh, has been established at National Institute of Health and Family Welfare in Delhi. and. Uh, Delhi has been established to provide technical training to coach and technicians in repair and maintenance of the coach and equipment. So these are the government things which is uh, government is doing as part of uh, to support the uh, enormous, humongous and big uh, immunization program. And since some strengthening, uh, you know, electronic vaccine intelligence network has been established and national coach and management information system has been 
establish to track cold chain equipment inventory availability and functionality so this is important from the public health perspective but we will try to learn from the uh, family physicians private practice uh, uh, point of view